I'm making one third of a fucking penny per stream on Spotify. I have to wait nearly a calendar year to get paid those royalties. <laughs> But in the midst of me trying to remove my music from Spotify, the weirdest ish happened. DIY. DIY is over the last week, I've done a lot of thinking since I released that Spotify video, basically highlighting their new threshold that they're going to be using in 2024, in which some artists will get paid more and some artists will not get paid at all if they don't reach this threshold. Now, if you wanna go watch that video, you can go watch that up here, it's on the channel. First of all, if you were going to do a threshold system, it should have been that from the jump. So why are you just gonna not pay people? I don't care if it's a dollar 23, why are you not gonna pay people? And I have an issue with the direction that a spot Spotify goes specifically because they're not the only ones that done this. Deezer's done it, but I don't know about you. I don't give a shit about Deezer. <laughs> Ain't nobody ever said, bro, if it wasn't for Deezer, I wouldn't have uh, discovered your music. Said nobody. So I'm not concerned about that. But what I am concerned is being aligned with ethics that don't align with my mission as a DIYer as a voice of DIYers. So I made the decision during the week after seeing so many established artists come to my comments and down talk up and coming artists like they're bottom feeders. <laughs> so I got on Twitter and I just started dumping my thoughts in real time as I started to see this weird dynamic of established artists telling up and coming artists, well, you're not serious and you don't deserve the money. That being said, I tweeted this. Let me tell you, this Spotify payout threshold announcement got established recording artists in my YouTube comments arguing with up and coming artists about what they do and don't deserve for their streams. Am I tripping to think that this was all done by design? I said, instead of Spotify paying you more as an established artist deservingly, Spotify dangled an estimated 10 billion that they could scoop from the bottom feeders and y'all with it. That's nasty work. This is why that union talk, you know the talk that everybody's like, we should strike. Rusty Crab is unfair. Mr. Krabs is in there, standing at the concession, plotting his oppression. What the heck does that mean? I don't know. Shut up. This is why that union talk don't move me. Everyone has very different ethics and goals. So I said, you know what? All right. Here's what my next plan is. I said, okay, let me just delete my music off of Spotify. You guys know very well, it's been well documented. I use DistroKid as my streaming provider and uh, they've been a really great partner. They're just a middleman and within all this to making sure that your music gets out there and I love them and I appreciate them. However, as I was looking through my account, I was looking for an option to remove my music specifically from Deezer and Spotify. And I was gonna keep going down the line if this threshold for payments continues. I'm not with that. But in the midst of me trying to remove my music from Spotify, the weirdest sh ish happened. When you're trying to get in touch with customer service, that's a headache in itself because you're going to talk to a bot first. So I talked to the bot and I, and I asked the bot, I said, I just want to delete my profile. And he said, I'm afraid we can't delete artist profiles entirely. An artist profile is automatically created when music is first released on Spotify by labels or distributors and is searchable as long as there's music on the profile. I draw issue with that only because if I were, for instance, Triple X Tentacion, when he was going through his phase of getting canceled, they were quick to remove his music off of streaming websites. R. Kelly's another one. So you can remove it, <laughs> but for whatever reason, you don't want to do that. So I said, if there's no music on my profile, what will happen to the profile? Profiles with no live content don't appear in Spotify search results. They may still be discoverable with the pre-existing URL or URI, but will appear empty. Of course I draw issue with that because that's my likeness. So then I asked them, I said, there's no way for me to remove my likeness and name from Spotify. The representative said, I'm afraid not. What can be done here is have your songs removed from Spotify so that your profile will appear as empty. That's the best you can do. No delete profile. You mean of all those genius coders that have able to crunch these complex numbers to determine payouts within this pool system. You don't have a fucking delete button. Are you kidding me? Okay, cool. So since I have a Spotify profile, I said, well, let me get creative because I am a creative. Let's get creative with it and let's see what we can do with this. So then I decided, you know what? What do I have control over? First of all, I can take my music down, which I did. I took every single one of my songs down. If I couldn't just take it from Spotify, I took it from all of the places because all of these streaming websites seem to be in a weird space trying to figure out what they want to do next. If you really want me to keep it a buck, I think some of them are going broke. I think they spent their money unwisely. That being said though, I was like, all right, cool. So then what can I do? And I can change the background. And that's exactly what I did. After removing all of my music, 
entirely. I left this message. I said, I removed my music from Spotify due to their new threshold requirements for certain artists to get paid. This directly conflicts with my DIYer missing mission. I believe all artists should be paid for their art. So I stand in solidarity with and with a strong belief that our music should be paid for. Unfortunately, they refuse to delete this profile with my likeness that they don't own. So yeah, find my music at curtisking.com. In the midst of this, I should start zooming out just to see what is going on right now in the traditional music industry. But I'm going to let Gino the Ghost, who's a songwriter, Grammy Award winning songwriter and artist, explain something interesting that's going on with one of the most popular PROs in the music industry, BMI. BMI recently announced it will be paying songwriters a smaller portion of revenue, upping its take of their cut from 10% to 15%. <laughs> they decided to reach into my fucking pocket in your pocket and take an extra 5% on the heels of the SAG strike and the WGA strike where artists and writers are fed up trying to make a livable wage and you decide, hey, what a good opportunity to take more money from songwriters. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. And shit just don't affect us in hip hop. It don't just affect our genre. It, it, it is happening in all segments of the music industry. And I have said this for the longest. You can go back to all these videos and reactions that I've done. I kept saying, these are two different ecosystems. Independent is one ecosystem and the major label traditional music industry is its own ecosystem with its own values, its own rules, its own trophies, its own ways to, you know what I mean? Like, like show that they're the shit. And whenever we intermingle and try to figure out how can we, man, how can I make my independence look more like major label? How can I, when we start to inter intermingle, we create issues. These people are not playing fair. Oh man, streaming has been brutal for songwriters. Let's take more. Let's recap. I'm making one third of a fucking penny per stream on Spotify. I have to wait nearly a calendar year to get paid those royalties. <laughs> It's not funny, but it's funny. I gotta wait a year to get screwed. It's business, Curtis. It's their business. Well, if you don't like it, leave. I did. So now let's figure out what can happen on this side. And now my PRO is taking an additional 5% because they want to increase their bottom line for their investors. Mm. Oh, becoming for profit will be good for our members. Clearly not because, oh, you're digging in my pockets. You don't own the copyright. That's a very important detail. Thank you for laying that out. Somebody a PRO does not own the copyright to the music, but BMI going from a non-profit to for-profit and doing this slick dish with taking that extra 5% is them moving around as if they they own something. When they themselves are trying to get sold off, they're feeling choosy. They want somebody to choose them and been wanting that for quite some time. Mike O'Neill better give me a call because I tell you what, we need to have a chat. I promise you. I'm taking everybody with me. Well, damn. And I'm not going quiet. Dave Mercury tagged me in this. I thought this was interesting. As I was removing my music, I saw that TikTok, a Spotify competitor, adds indie artists to its library. Independent artists using DistroKid to share their music will now have another avenue on TikTok. A deal announced today between the video platform and DistroKid could bring millions of songs by independent artists to TikTok music. The platform's subscription-driven streaming service launched earlier this year could be appealing to up-and-coming musicians looking for a viral breakout. DistroKid artists already had the option to add their music to TikTok's library, but today's announcement expands that feature to TikTok music. Additionally, artists have had the option to upload their music to TikTok's commercial music library. DistroKid music will also be available in CapCut. TikTok had an enormous influence on the music industry from driving number one hits to amplifying unsigned, unknown talent. I just hope that TikTok gets this payout situation right. I put up a tweet and I was like, man, I wish I had an opportunity to talk to this man right here. Prince, who notoriously went up against Warner Brothers. He wrote Slave across his face as he was dealing with some grievances. And in 2015, he removed his music from most subscription services. And I want to read this with you. The latest move in the developing chess game of streaming music has been made by the musician Prince. On Wednesday, just a day after Apple introduced its new music app, Prince removed his music from most subscription streaming services. A note on Prince's Spotify page. I didn't even see this, which is funny. Prince's publisher has asked that all streaming services remove his catalog. We have cooperated with the request and hope to bring his music back as soon as possible. But Prince left his music on title. 
the subscription service that Jay-Z bought this year and has styled as an artist-friendly outlet. Although Prince was not one of the 16 acts that were identified as the owners of Tidal, it's an introduction in, in his introduction in March. He has used it for exclusive content like live stream of his Baltimore concert in May. Prince is a longtime advocate for artist rights, particularly his own. Last year, he took full control of his publishing catalog and made a new deal with his former record label, Warner Brothers, with whom he publicly feuded with in the 1990s. I feel like I am walking in some pretty big shoes, but at the same time, I can tell you there has never been a decision that I felt more confident about. This was posted by Say Cheese. How much money you'll earn for a million streams in 2023? Spotify will give you $4,000 for that. Amazon Music, $5,000. Apple Music, $7,000 to $10,000. Tidal, $13,000 to $15,000. Napster, $18,000. They will laugh at us in the future. This is wild. Meanwhile, these platforms and their advertisers are eating off of the traffic while we share from a pie. Nah, start building your website. I'll help you. I don't have a beef with streaming in its entirety. I have issues with the way that they have structured the payouts. I don't have beef with it. I was on these platforms with the impression that because they haven't quite got it right, they would move into a direction that would be more fair. Excuse me for being idealistic, more fair to the people that are the foundation of their fucking website. Without music, what is Spotify? But white noise, but silent albums, but binaural beats. That, no, that's music, that's music. This is part of the reason why I chose not to pursue the traditional music industry. I looked in and I saw everything that I needed to see and I said, I'm back out here and I might as well go figure out how to make some real bread because all of this middleman shit is getting old. It's taking a long time for me to get paid. However, it started feeling like I'm starting to answer to someone once again when it comes to Spotify. When it comes to what they determine I am eligible to get paid for after a calendar year. And I've had a lot of very intelligent people who have talked to me in hopes of convincing me to look at it from a different point of view and not delete my music. However, I stand on that 1000%. When I tell you DIYers, that I stand in solidarity with you? That's if you look at it and say, ha ha, what a dummy. He got rid of songs that had 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 streams. I don't give a shit. This is also because I believe that music in itself should be paid for. All of these other products that exist out here, isn't it weird that the traditional industry pushes this narrative that the primary product is of little to no value according to them when it comes to consumers because they know consumers so damn well and analytics can you know what I'm saying can tell you everything you need to know and we just believe the shit instead of even trying afraid to even put something up for sale you say the word cd and i have never heard that many boomers thrown at me for just saying cd vinyl then i gotta ask have you ever even tried no they haven't tried but those are my thoughts diyers you let me know your thoughts, though. DIY. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.